Unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica from the scrapbooks of Adrian Freita. Despite its global appeal as one of the world's premier tourism destinations, Montego Bay is much more than sea, sun and sun. There is also an unsavory side to the city as it relates to crime and violence and economic hardship especially among the working class. While stories about the city's crime problem, especially a murder rate that has averaged over 100 every year for the past 20 years, an unflattering incident such as a 2005 8-hour gun battle between the security forces and gunmen in Canterbury. The most shameless act the city has ever witnessed must be the 1999 street people scandal which saw some 32 street people being kidnapped from the streets of Montego Bay and transported to St. Elizabeth under the cover of darkness and dumped near a mud leak. The most shameful aspect of that shameless incident was the fact that well-placed officials were involved in the planning and execution of, the, of that nefarious deal which could have led to the death of all 32 victims because had they decided to venture around in the dark after they were dumped they could well have ended up in a mud leak. In fact some of the persons who were taken away have still not been properly accounted for. The sad truth is what happened should not have happened anywhere in the civilized world. Unfortunately, those who were involved in that ugly episode decided that it would be better to sacrifice a volatile group of people to paint a fake picture of Montego Bay to, to impress the overseas officials who were slated to come to Montego Bay for the 1999 G15 conference. I will be revisiting that despicable incident from a story I wrote for the Gleaner which was published on July 15, 2021 under the headline Mobe Street People Scandal – A Tale of Shame. The story read as follows. It was one of those serene Montego Bay nights. A rookie Gleaner reporter was walking through Sam Sharp Square when she saw men believed to be members of the St. James Parish Council work crew and police officers rolling up street people, pepper spraying them, binding their hands with ropes and placing them in the back of a truck. It was not until the following morning when news broke that 32 street people had been kidnapped from several locations in downtown Montego Bay the previous night, July 15, 1999, and subsequently dumped near Mudley near Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth, that the young reporter realized that what she had seen was the genesis of a monumental act of shame and injustice. Based on the account given at the time by survivor Vernon Gibson, a veteran of the US Army who saw combat in Vietnam, things could have turned out worse had his fellow captives not heeded his advice and not those of their captors who were urging them to run down the slope into the dark. When we reached the place, St. Elizabeth, it was almost daylight but it was still dark. Then back up the truck about 20 feet from a spot cut the rope and let me out and said the first man who run down the hill will get the best room, recalled Gibson. I raised my hand and said, don't move, make me wait until daylight. When day break, we realized we were almost at the edge of a mud lake. It is still unclear as to whether or not some of the street people heeded Vernon's instruction as to date, six of the 32 street people have never been accounted for. There is a belief that they may have ended up in the mud lake and simply disappear off the face of the earth for good. In recounting what transpired, as a mixture of mentally ill and homeless persons were tied up and placed in a truck with St. James Parish Council painted on its body and transported some 45 miles away to the edge of the mud lake on the outskirts of Santa Cruz instead of the hospital as they were being told. Whitley Finletter Another survivor said he was told to get into the truck as he was being taken to get medication. I get up and went with them. They took me to a truck which was a dump body. I noticed there was about 25 other people in it with their hands tied with rope. Later they tied up my hands also saying I would jump out of the truck so I sit down, recall Finn later. 
When the news of the Distardly Act became public, there was an angry public outcry and suddenly public officials, including the then Mayor of Montego Bay, Hugh Solomon, officials of the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and the local leadership of the police suddenly became inaccessible to the media. However, with the then opposition, the Jamaica Labour Party, Jamaicans for Justice, Community for the Upliftment of the Mentally Ill, Kumi, and other concerned bodies demanding justice for the mistreated street people to include bringing it to international human rights bodies such as Amnesty International, the then Commissioner of Police, Francis Forbes, ordered the St. James Police to seek out and return the street people to Montego Bay. In addition, five policemen who were implicated in the incident were ordered our frontline duty. Following a police investigation, a file was submitted to the Director of Public Prosecution for a ruling. It was subsequently ruled that Inspector of Police Ainsworth Giddens, truck driver Roger Leslie and Egbert Campbell, an employee of Western Parks and Market, should be charged. With known public officials among those charged, the call for justice and allegations of cover-up stemming from the ice level grew louder. After initially rejecting a call for a commission of inquiry, the government finally relented. The commission of inquiry, which featured retired judge Justice Carl Patterson, the Reverend Dr. George Simpson, and attorney at law Donna Parchment as the commissioners, were critical of the abduction and expressed disappointment with some of the public officials who testified. However, except for the finger of accountability that was pointed at Inspector Giddens and Tubal Brown, the Superintendent of Roads and Works at the St. James Parish Council, the public officials, including many who should have known, technically escaped with the commissioners declaring the incident a grim picture in national life, while accusing witnesses of invoking privilege as a shield against full and frank admissions and in a conspiracy to conceal the truth. While not laying substantial blame on any particular person, the Commission of Inquiry made a number of recommendations as well as ruled that the aggrieved street people should be compensated by the state. In accepting the Commissioner's recommendation, the government signed off on a monthly compensation package of $20,000 for the victims for the remainder of their lives. The recommendation for the establishment of a National Homeless Help Task Force to be funded from public funds was also accepted. However, while the Commission of Inquiry placed a lid on what had become known unofficially as the Montego Bay Street People Scandal, many persons, including Kumi's Joy Crooks, in her capacity as administrator of the organization, were left disappointed that the public officials, for the most part, walked away and scathed in terms of accountability. How can there be closure when nobody has come forward and admitted that they have done anything wrong? Crook said in the aftermath of the Commission of Inquiry. How can there be closure when some people continue to behave like this thing never happened? While it is clear that some public officials dodged the proverbial bullet at the inquiry, this incident will remain as one of those unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica. Unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica from the scrapbooks. Adrian Fruita. Before you go, please remember to subscribe.